Hey there, in the previous video, we opened up the Sharp X68000 chassis and took out the bottom PCB. From the looks of it, you can see that it has been dusty and grimy for more than a decade now and it needs cleaning. So I took out my faithful dust brush and went crazy with it. I made sure to go through every nook and cranny on the PCB surface. The brush is really soft and thus I was not hesitant to apply force. Once it was relatively cleaner than before, I desoldered the battery and gave it a bath with 100% isopropyl alcohol. I made sure to remove as much crud and corrosion that I can when giving it the alcohol bath with a soft old toothbrush. As you can see from the pictures, the condition of the board has improved a lot. Always remember that dust is hygroscopic, so be sure to remove as much dust as you can from the PCB surface to improve the life of the PCB. Once the battery was removed, I marked all the capacitors on the PCB with a marker and started replacing them one by one with new high quality radial capacitors made by the Japanese company Nishikon. I replaced all the old capacitors with new capacitors mostly rated for 105 degrees centigrade operation for improved long life performance. You can see the final results of the capacitor replacement. One thing that I would like to point out here is that you should always use a high quality desoldering pump while desoldering capacitors which are connected to the ground planes. I have mentioned a link in the video description from where you can get a list of all the capacitors that I ordered online for this replacement. As you can see, the board now looks as good as new. As this board is almost ready, let's go back to our X68000 and pull out the video module. You need to remove three screws to free up the video module. These are placed here, here and here. Once these screws are removed, pull out the video module softly. You will observe that it is housing additional circuitry in a Faraday's cage. To access the PCB, you need to remove one screw holding the Faraday's cage. Once this screw is removed, you can gently pull out the metal cover and you will get access to the video module PCB. You will observe here that you need to remove three additional screws to free the video module from the Faraday's cage. Once I took out the video module from the Faraday's cage, I proceeded to clean it thoroughly and replace the capacitors on it the same way that I did in case of the previous PCB. It is my general rule to replace all capacitors in old computer hardware which deal with analog video every 10 years or so to maintain the performance and pristine video output. As you can see from the video that the PCB is now clean and the capacitors have all been replaced with new 105 degree centigrade operation capacitors. In the next video, I will be adding a rechargeable coin cell battery to work as the new SRAM battery that we removed from the bottom board and move ahead with the restoration. As always, thanks for watching.